Greetings, this is Kitchen, and welcome to my very light overview of MA Ohm being my favorite nation. Why am I saying it's very light over you? Well, because it's end of a cycle for uh, life of Dominion 5 with Dominion 6 coming soon. So I don't see much point into getting too much into details. And I will actually still make more detailed like overview of what I think of Ohm as a whole when I'll be uploading my Dominion's Enhanced Spark of Divinity game as Ohm. Uh, I'll get more into like various strategies uh, of Ohm in, in that uh, case. But I still want to just have small introduction of Ohm. Ohm is a fantastic nation, at least in my opinion. It's, it excels in what it does, but has incredibly glaring weaknesses. So it has probably the best baseline infantry for the gold cost, uh, with of course having very high resources. You know, incredible protection, very good quality weapons, uh, above average hit points, strength and, and stuff, uh, with the magic resistance being a weaker part of them. Uh, so that's worth keeping in mind. Um, I very much love them, mainly, again, for the excelling heavy infantry, uh, their guardians, which are cap-only uh, built-in magic uh, weapon that has an effect of absolutely screwing enemy sacreds. So that's one of the reasons why, even if they're like some helpless sacred nations, like the last thing they want to fight is own because guardians will mess them up, like no matter what it is. It can be elves. Uh, you don't have to hit with this weapon for that effect to apply. They have to swing. And couple swings, and even the uh, elven, you know, sacred calf units will go to sleep. So, as far as infantry, though, uh, the only really like quote unquote war for a while ones are pioneers because again, link five weapon. Um, there they are, battle axes because it's your hardest hitting weapon, and of course guardians because the. I, I like to make them pu pu purely, uh, purely. Um, I, I like to turn my cap to purely make only guardians from like a couple turns into the game and never stop, right? Because of how limited and how powerful they are. Of course, they, you pay a hefty amount for it and, you know, to get a very high resource and recruitment point cost. Mm, there are also Black Knights, which are very strong calf, but it has some very annoying things that just drive me nuts. Like, Morningstar, I hate it as a weapon. Uh, you probably heard me say that uh, about, uh, about it in a Nurgle series, if you're watching it. Uh, because, yeah, minus the defense. So if it was a broadsword, for example, it would be literally a three-point swing. So that would go up to 16 defense, which is just so much better than 13. It's not even funny. Uh, and of course, slashing type is better than stupid blunt pierce. Like, Jesus Christ, that two attack is negligible against... Uh, the 8 helps to still max some indies, but come on, defense is much more important than calf. But still, they come with incredible armor. They're quite expensive and resource intensive, all of that. But um, I am of the school where I actually do like using Black Knights for expansion together with Black Lords, which are very cool, uh, easy to make thugs later in the game. And there are also great commanders, uh, like, you know, AT leadership is probably the best you get, actually. Yeah. Um, so you slap in a couple. You know, inspirational items, maybe some that increase your leadership. You can just have blobs of, of uh, your sake of units uh, just led by one black lord. But other than that, you know, they really like to take sword of sharpness, maybe bracers of protection, burning pearl, and you can chop any super combatant with enough of them. You know, maybe like armor of anti magic and uh, stuff like that to help with some MR spells. Uh, well, okay, that's one one thing I'm gonna mention. It's important to actually. If you want to use them in large capacity from the start of the game, it's important to have some extra MR because they have higher hit points than pretty much all of your units, so they will be targeted with some MR resist spells. And you will see in that game, because again, I'm recording it as I'm pretty far into the game, like turn 40 or so, I am going to lose quite a few Black Lords to MR resist spell. And while I'm saying that, uh, this is going to be a magic gen game. I don't think I mentioned that. Uh, and it being Magic Gen game is one of the reasons why I picked Ulm, because Ulm is just a solid package in what it is, right? You just, you really don't need anything gimmicky spell-wise. Of course, there are some great air spells in the vanilla that you can use in combat and buff your units. But as a baseline, it's just super strong. And that was, that was my reasoning for picking them. I didn't really have time to... Uh, or will, to be fair, to browse through all the spells that were generated in, in, in the new spell book. So I just figured, okay, I'm going to take what I feel comfortable with, which is solid no matter what. It should be fine. And it's been mostly true, 
except in hindsight, now knowing what there will be present in a, uh, in a spell book, I would have taken uh, probably a giant nation because I think they would benefit the most out of various like buffs and stuff like that present there. I will not be getting into spellbook at all. Uh, I will not be making videos. It just uh, I, I saw Mo uh, make videos of all these spellbooks and with different school ones and just so many uh, hours into that that I have to go into just thinking about this sort of stuff. Like even though I'm turn 14 in that game, I still just don't know most of the spells. I'm just rolling with it. So it's going to be a little bit lazy a game, I would say. Sorry about that if, if it's going to annoy you. But yeah, you also have Priestsmiths and the Master Smiths. Priestsmith being my, you know, like artillery uh, mages and Master Smiths being crafters because they have better forge bonus than, mm, than mm, Priestsmiths. And also, you know, they can uh, cast uh, like other buffs, for example. Uh, why am I saying artillery? Because as you'll see in my bless, I'll be taking a uh, far caster, right? Spoiler. And I mean, honestly, that's what it is for MAO. You, uh, you also have spies, which you can make sometimes, you know, they give you better info. You can do some fun stuff with infiltration or uh, instilling uprising, but that problem is to recruit them points that are pretty expensive. So, you know, ideal you still use just indie scouts. But yeah, for Um, you literally you are interested only in Black Lords, uh, Priest Smiths, Master Smiths, uh, Master Mason, of course, to make Citadels, and sometimes Black Acolytes to make like temples without using your Priest Smith turns. And for troops, you care about Black Blade Infantry with Great Axes, Black Blade Infantry with Pikes, Guardians, and Black Knights. Don't get me started on crossbows. Those are arbalas, they fire every three turns. It's awful, even though damage is really high. The, the damage output is horrendous. And suppers are incredibly expensive for what they offer uh, with just regular crossbow. Sure, they have hard hitting melee attacks of awful stats, and they do give you a big siege bonus, but you have way easier ways of getting siege power that's not gonna involve getting those guys for 20 gold. So, yeah, that's basically it. Um, let's take a look at the pretender. This is more or less my standard pretender for Um, as in, I take it most of the games. Okay, so, uh, with one exception, I'm just gonna point it now very quickly. Two points of Undying, uh, I kinda goofed up, I forgot to actually put a point of Undead Leadership instead. Uh, it really, it can be a quite significant deal, because even one point gives you plenty of leadership for you to go around with your priest smiths and priests even, uh, so that would be great, and that two points of Undying really don't make a difference. Maybe even changing both of those points into uh, under leadership would be better. I, I always like to have a little bit of extra uh, life as well. Uh, you see it with strong Vita, Vita for example. Um, because, you know, later in the game, hopefully you'll have a variety of battlefield buffs such as regeneration. So uh, that little bit can matter, um, you know, of not losing a mage. But yeah, so yeah, that's that was one mistake I am regretting actually <laughs> in a game of not having other leadership. But let's just talk about chassis. So Master Alchemist is a great chassis for what I like to do with Ulm, which is imprison a guy, slap him a rainbow, meaning that I can cast whatever I wish when he wakes up and break me into all of these um, uh, schools of magic. I know that there are various opinions about it. I just think this is... I'm not saying this is the correct way of play. This is the way I like to play, and I found a very effective way to play. I've won many, many games as uh, MA Ulm uh, using more or less something like that. Sometimes I do spice things up. But uh, this gives me access to basically all the boosters I want, you know, with Astro 5. Uh, you know, it gives me coin with Earth. It gives me the rings for the sorcery or all spell books. This gives me helmet. This gives me stuff of elemental mastery, the one I choose, the one, the one I feel like uh, crafting more. This gives me fire booster, the miscellaneous one, the burning school, whatever it's called. Pistol mace, of course. Uh, this gives me bloodstones if I want more earth. Uh, you know, basically everything I want. For scales, I'm going with Dominion 4, that's plenty enough. Uh, you know, of course, one have to keep in mind that if you're being pushed with Dominion a bit hard, you ought to probably make some priests or, you know, slap more temples. You do have Inquisitors, so at least that's that. It might be worth considering them in such a circumstance, but yeah, for Dominion's plenty, you don't have sacreds, right? Besides your priest mages and priests. So that, that does the job. Mm, order 1. Sure, it would be nice to have more order, but uh, fronts that give you order are relatively common, so that can be solved by that. And also, you'll be 
restrained by resources earlier than recruitment points. And also recruitment points in some sense are fixed by growth because you're just growing population in your capital especially, and that will also increase your uh, recruitment points. But yeah, order well nice and gives you some gold as well. It's not a vital um, uh, scale. Uh, and also, you know, it, it doesn't reduce the event as much because I'm basically going for almost perfect scales, right? Production is a must have, uh, mainly in the early game because you want to squeeze as many troops as you can get, and that's where production hits in. Over time, you'll be having so many smiths that actually production scale doesn't matter nearly as much. You'll be just generating resources from your mages. So you could cut in production that way, but it does hinder your early game a little bit. And I just didn't have a need to cut it for whatever else in like magic, basically. Hit free. Um, I mean, what, is, what else is there to say? Like, sure, I could go for cold free because it actually has almost no effect on you. You're basically one province move nation if you use your troops, which is uh, actually one of the largest weak, uh, weak points. Sure, it would make your Black Knights also slower, but uh, Cold Free, there's an argument for it. Uh, the reason why I go for Hit Free, however, is because I do have Fire Mages, right? I do have Fire 1 and Fire 2 random sometimes on Smiths. I have easy access to making very cheap and masked fires in the jar, and that gives me uh, a gem to cast uh, Phoenix Power. And with some extra gems in inventory, like, or, you know, there are other items that also give you temporary fire gems, such as some magma stuff, something like that. The one that gives you, like, retinue magma, dude, and, like, free fire, temporary fire gems. Uh, that basically gives me a very strong defensive option with fire elementals. A grow free, I mean, suffice to say, a grow free is amazing. So it's, like, free. Uh, you're not going to, I'm not going to be raining events because I'm going turmoil, but it's still going to be mostly good events thanks to that. Uh, you know, I have, I have points to do that. Um, drain free. Uh, I've seen opinions where it's actually good to go magic free with all, but I find that absolutely crazy idea. Why? Because this is 320 points, right? That you get for designing. If you go magic free from zero, it doesn't cost you 120 to go to magic free. It costs you 240 to go to, go to magic free because you go either magic free or drain free. There's no reason to go drain two, drain one. You don't consider those options. Like drain free is your starting point. That's 240 design points to go to magic free. If someone wants to do it, by all means, do go for it. But I, I think that's absurd. Uh, like it's way too expensive uh, point wise for what slightly better research you have already amazing research you just roll through uh to construction six and just shit out lanterns like nobody's business and yeah you're, you're done you don't need magic at all also if you're invaded it actually makes you more susceptible to various mr resist spells your troops will go down to eight mr that's horrendous like you're, you're like undead uh so you know at least in your domain you bump up back to basic 10 and hopefully you'll gain various sources of uh, anti-magic. There is that one unique spell that Ulm has in Taumaturgy, like tempering the mind or whatever, uh, but it's by itself is MR resist, so you kind of have to cast like three times in combat for it to cover all of your units, and actually it will not affect your mages either, because they'll probably resist it already. So yeah, no. Drain, drain, I, I'd say that's the one uh, scale you really should always go for as Ulm. I completely disagree with going magic. Mm. Now, for the... Yeah, puffs are mainly so they break me to whatever boosters I want, but also give me basic resistances for my Prismiths. My Prismiths being my main uh, battle mage, uh, you know, would be great if I just don't get random shockwave or lightning strike, um, various other nonsense that can be cast in combat. So yeah, resistances will help with that a ton. Reinvigoration because they're artillery units. If I went, for example, air 5 or air 3 I would take Mountain Survival instead. That does help with mobility uh, quite a bit. Spirit Sight, I mean, why not, right? It's going to help in some, uh, like, cave fights or, you know, with darkness being cast. It's not going to make their accuracy completely dog shit. Farcaster, that's a big deal. Mm, why? Because Ulm has... So, despite this being a Spelljant game, um, the national spells are still present, so Ulm has a couple amazing national spells. 
mainly Iron Darts and Iron Blizzard in particular, even though they have been nerfed quite a bit uh, in quite a relatively recent patch, because before they actually bypassed shields, which was, <laughs> mm. uh, it was very brutal, okay? And uh, right now they don't. Still, they excel in what they do. Uh, they absolutely delete any magical units because they have like damage multiplier against magic units. And you just spray a ton of darts that, uh, yeah, it's one of the best evocations in a game, in my opinion. So that just gives me that much further, like, fun of it, where it will just delete, hopefully, enemy mages and their, like, uh, ranged firepower. So that's the reason for that. And then, again, I wish I turned into a uh, leadership. That's my mistake. I derped out. Poison resistance. One of the biggest weaknesses of Ulm is that you're gonna get gassed if you don't find uh, indie mage of nature and you know you get them to nature two with stuff or other means because you need the nature two uh, to do that. And strong vita again is to just bump them up. Who would be have to uh, to have the uh, oh my gosh the blood for uh, <laughs> blessing that gives you the virus bonus if you kill someone? My God, I'm blanking right now. I forget how it's called. Blood uh, something. You know which one I'm talking about, okay? God, I'm, I'm derping out right now. Still, having that set in mind, okay, this is like my vanilla build that I'm also bringing here. And um, in Belgian, you don't know what to expect. There can be resistances to various schools of magic in schools of magic and tiers that make no sense. They can be available much earlier or much later in the research. They might require gems, they might not, they might have 12% casting speed, or they might have 300% casting speed. So, again, I went to it, you know, just a semi-solid vanilla baseline, again, with stupid mistake of undying too. Um, but that's my reasoning. So, with that being said, a lot of my default plans for how I want to play Ulmo will be completely destroyed <laughs> uh, in that game because random spells. But that will open a lot of new and very powerful ways that I can actually still win the game with, uh, despite having various issues such as mobility again, uh, lack of mm, you know magic weapons, let's say, on besides the guardians, uh, and it will open up some other ways of gaining magic diversity besides my master alchemist. Because again, the, most of the normally seen uh, like summons they will not be present like i'll be getting my iron angel still because it's national but uh, there's no guarantee there are uh, elemental royalty there's no guarantee there'll be early fire mantles to get uh, and stuff like that fire spirits if i want to break into higher fire virus other nature summons like um what's the name of those vinogre uh, leaders where they break you to nature free quite nicely you know that's that's the stuff i'd usually look for uh having this guy's my pretender so that will be flipped in many ways in that game. But all in all, it should be working out quite quite solidly. Again, this is solid baseline, in my opinion, on how I play Ohm. And yeah, that should be basically it for my like very light overview slash uh, introduction of strategy um, into my Spelljam game. But this is going to be pretty much going with a flow and improvising as the game goes, as you'll probably see. And you'll hear me complain about that. Uh, it is fun experience for once, at least for me, for one time. Um, I am not digging it for any more times, but if someone haven't ever played spell gem, I do recommend it. It's quite a wild experience, okay? There's some crazy spells that can catch you, off, cut, uh, catch you off guard, or you can catch someone off guard completely and win you a game. Uh, but yeah, that'll be it. Thank you for watching. It was uh, maybe slightly more chaotic than I would like normally, uh, but still, very light over you. I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.